بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحب التفي الله continue on in our study of Sheikh Muhammad Al Madkhali رحمة الله عليه رحمة واسعة his explanation of أصول السنة the six fundamentals by Imam Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله Ta'ala. And we reach the fifth principle from amongst the six principles where Sheikh uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala said al-asl al-khamis, the fifth foundation uh, or fifth fundamental. He said, bayan Allah subhanahu li awliya illah wa tafriqihi baynahum wa bayna al-mutashabbihin bihim min a'da Allah wal munafiqin wal fujjar so in the first part of the uh, this fifth fundamental he mentioned Muhammad al had mentioned, he said the explanation, this fifth principle is the explanation of Allah, the glorified, concerning his awliya and his different, different and his differing uh, or distinguishing between them and those who seek to resemble them from the enemies of Allah, the hypocrites and the disobedient sinners. And that which is sufficient concerning this is a statement of Allah the Glorified. Uh, so here in the fifth uh, principle, the Shaykh Muhammad ibn al Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala is explaining that from these foundation principles is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> in the Quran distinguishes between who his awliya, his friends are, and who the awliya of shaitan is. And that not, not everyone who the people believe to be the friends and close and those who are near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are in fact near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of them are the worst of creation. Some of the, the most, uh, the fujar, the wicked sinners. And the munafiqeen, some of even hypocrites, that people build up to say that these are friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you ask yourself, how can this be? But when we look at the history of Islam, and we're going to go through this in, in, in the context of what, in the time uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala was writing, you'll find that the people, and even in contemporary times, you'll find some people are supposedly saints and awliya and wali look, and sheikh so-and-so and alam so-and-so that some of these people are the most wicked of people. These are people who lie uh, about the book of Allah and the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and deceive the people and then claim to be awliya, the people sacrifice to them. The people give their wives to, con to, to have the, the sheikh consummate with his wife before he consummates his marriage. These are real scenarios that have happened throughout Islamic history. And perhaps some of these things still exist in the Muslim world. So it shows that the people made ta'zim, you know, uh, exalted individuals to such an extent. And some of these individuals were not even worthy of even being called Muslim, they were so deviant. And they had so many practices of shirk and kufr and filth that they were away from Islam and the sifat of the awliya. And so then he mentions the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, says, Say if you truly love Allah, then follow me. Allah will then love you and forgive you your sins. Surah Ali Imran, verse uh, 31. Very, very important. Uh, this ayat in uh, Ali Imran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله. So Allah subhanahu wa taala here shows us that the one who really loves Allah loves His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and He illustrates that love of His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam by practicing the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Subhanallah. Look at the madhab of Ahl Sunnah in understanding this. Ahl Sunnah understands that you, that means you have to practice the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and that the sunnah is muhkama. The sunnah is muhkam. That the sunnah is, it's a part of the Islamic legislation. You can't have uh, uh, Islam without the Book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, because the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is contained in the Book of Allah. And it's the actualization and it explains the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and clarifies the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's only through this clarification of the actions and the speech and the things that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed that we understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, it, it amazes me. Sometimes I, I'm even stuck for words and I occasionally get into this discussion and, act, and sometimes it becomes a debate and then we just have to cool it down. Uh, at my, my place of employment, a particular brother is so... His concept of Islam, may Allah guide us in him, that he almost... That is almost a Qur'ani, he, although he knows he's well versed in the Arabic language. He's from one of the Arab countries, I don't want to say where. But he's very strong in Arabic. The strongest, and he knows tafsir. He used to read as a child. But his concept, he, he just doesn't believe, he says the sunnah, I, I don't even understand how they, where they got this from, uh, of their understanding of how the sunnah is just like a, a light supplementary guide because they believe that, well, the sunnah, you know, there's so much doubt in the sunnah as far as things being authentic and so forth. But you see this at Taqad, it actually comes from some of the groups like uh, Ahl Kalam, from uh, the, you know, the Jahamiya and the Ma'tazila and groups like this, who uh, some of them, they believe that, you know, that the Sunnah could, you know, basically they had a lot of doubt in the Sunnah of the Prophet And especially when it came to issues of al asma wa sifat and many of the issues of Iman, you know, this is how it affected their belief in the Qadr, and this is how it affected their belief in al asma wa sifat and it affected their belief in uh, the, you know, so many practices of Islam, because think of, if you were just explaining the Qur'an on how you understood it, Think how different you we all would have as an understanding of of Islam, and what is wajib and what is what is uh, haram and, and so forth, and that's exactly how these individuals practice their their Islam, is they just totally discard some of them totally discard the Sunnah, some of them keep remnants of the Sunnah for whatever purposes, and they have darajat as Ahlul Sunnah tafawit. Uh, that Ahl Sunnah they have different levels, you know, depending upon their knowledge, and Ahl Bid'ah have different levels depending upon their deviance or their lack of knowledge. Wallahu Musta'an. So here, the Shaykh he said uh, about this ayat, Shaykh Salih bin Fuzan mentioned some very important uh, benefits uh, regarding this about the Oli of Allah subhanahu Wata'ala. And he mentions that this qaida, this asl, uh, he said, you know, it's an immense and immensely important asl or foundation. And it is what distinguishes between the oli of Allah and the oli of the shaitan. This foundation distinguishes and is a clarification of who the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are, the true ones, 
and the Oli of the Shaitan. Lana Ahl al-Batl saru yusammun al-Oli al-Shaitan, Oli Allah, hatta in in the had al-Amr al-Tabis ala al-Nas. ولذلك سنف الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى كتابا نافعا مفيدا سماه الفرقان بين الأولياء الرحمن وأولياء الشيطان. so the sheikh he then said he said uh, so this قاعده it distinguishes between أهل uh, the people of uh, the friends of Allah and the friends of the shaitan and this is because the people of falsehood. They began to call the awliya of the shaitan, the friends of the shaitan, the awliya of Allah. And this is what we were just talking about. And the awliya of Allah, they called the awliya of shaitan. So the people, they got it opposite. Some of the people of uh, Ahl al-Bid'ah and desires, especially the extreme deviants. And he said, until it, it deceived the the many of the people and this is what happened in many of the Muslim countries around the world and it still exists in many places that the people have been dece deceived by the awliya of the shaitan who says the awliya of Allah are really the deviant ones and I'll give you an example and it's not we're not saying that making a tezkiyah for our scholars or for our brothers necessarily to ski it to nefs, but I just want to give you an example. If you travel in some of the Muslim countries, you will see that those people who try and strive their utmost to practice the sunnah, and they have they wear the dress of the sunnah, and they have beards. For example, the men, long beards, practice in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is what he commanded us to do. It's not about a trend, but he commanded us sallallahu alaihi wasallam to grow the beard and trim the mustache. And you see that their garments are short, their thobes are short. You will see many of the people ridicule them. And some of them, you will see they hate them. And you'll find this in Egypt, I've seen it. But I am very familiar with it in Yemen, in some of the places, I, especially in Hadramot, there's so many Sufis there. It's a majority Sufi, but alhamdulillah, the, the issue is changing. Ahl Sunnah has spread so much. And even Akhwan al Muslimin and those other groups, and the Tekfiris are strong there too. The point being, is you'll see, you can see the way they look at you. And subhanAllah, you will walk by a masjid in it, and it's known that it has a grave in it. So they're actually, they have shirkiyat in there. It's so strange to see people who say la ilaha illallah, and they have graves in their masajid, and, and they really do these things. We, we, we read these things, but when we see it in real life, it's the strangest and scariest thing. You know, because even in our jahiliya, even before Islam, we didn't have this. I mean, I wasn't a Catholic, so I didn't, we didn't have these sanctified saints in the church even. They didn't have dead people in the church where you did all those kind of rituals and that you, uh, you know, are going to the graves and, and to off and sacrificing to them. But when you see some of that, I, and I've only witnessed some of it, it's a strange thing. And you see how the people look at you because they see the people of the sunnah. They know the celebs. Just you're walking to the beach. You see brothers walking to the beach. The way those people look at you, they hate you, and they believe you are truly the only of the shaitan because you call to the book of Allah and the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the madhab of the salaf. But you don't call to the way of their awliya. And you don't call to the way of their grandfathers. And you don't make blind follow and homage to their shaykh and taqlid. This is, this is it. So you see a type of animosity and hatred that they have for the people of the Sunnah. And this is exactly what has happened in the hearts of the people. So then they take the awliya of the shaitan and they praise them and raise them and love them and some of them worship them. And the awliya of Rahman, the awliya of Rahman, ar Rahman, uh, the awliya of the friends of the most merciful who are trying to follow the book of Allah and the Sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the method of the salaf, how the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een understood and articulated Islam, that those people become the devils to them. This is how the people think. Subhanallah. Wallahu misa'an. So it's very imperative to know some of those sifat of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The real sifat, the characteristics of them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
في كتاب الكريم ألا إن الأولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون Verily the awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah, there is no fear upon them nor do they become, nor are they saddened and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies who they are الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ those who believe and they were of the pious, the muttaqeen. What do they believe in? They believe in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala dhahirihi according to the minhaj of the Salaf al-Saleh. They believe in the i'tiqad of Ahl al-Sunnah wal jamaa They believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they believe in his tawheed, tawheed al-rububiyya, tawheed al-uluhiyya, tawheed al-asma'i wa sifat. They believe in this. They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe all the ibadah goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe that when they raise their hand to they raise their hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they supplicate to Allah. They do not believe that they should supplicate to the dead, to their grandfathers, to their sheikh, whether living or deceased. They don't believe that. So that shows the difference. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alladina Amanu. So we have to know what do they amanu? What do they believe? They believe in the aqidah, i'tiqad of Ahl al-Sunnati wa jama'ah. They believe in the, the pillars of Iman. In tu'minu billahi wa malaykati wa kutubihi wa rasuli wa liyum al-akhir wa tu'minu bi qadri khayri wa shar. They believe in the six pillars of Iman. To believe in Allah, to believe in his books, to believe in his angels, to believe uh, in his messengers, to believe in the, uh, in, in the day of judgment, to believe in the divine destiny, the good of it and the bad of it. This is the only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not anybody floating around the room. It's not the one who says, I'm sitting here in, uh, you know, Bangladesh and I'm really, and you see my body here, but really my heart is in Mecca and, I'm, make, and I'm making Hajj now or I'm making Umrah as you speak or the, our Sheikh made, a, <laughs> our Sheikh is fasting Ramadan, but he doesn't actually have to fast. No, that's not, that's the only of Shaitan that say these statements and make these claims. It's not the only of Rahman. The only of Rahman, only of, only of the Rahman, Ar Rahman, they go back to the ayat. What's the first ayat that we read? In Kuntum to Hibbun Allah, Fatabiuni Yuhbibakum Allah. That's the only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you love Allah, then follow me and Allah will love you. Those are the only of Rahman. Because they are restricted in their ibadah to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They don't go outside of that. Whereas the Uliya Shaitan say that there's new acts of ibadah. Oh, yet even you'll find in their books. I've listened to this many times. The Mashaikh they mention that some of those extreme Sufi texts that they'll say, "Ruya an an Rabbi ila qalbi." that my Lord narrated to my heart, meaning that they have a direct wahi to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are, some of those deviant shayateen even claim that they receive like revelation for what they do. That they receive a type of inspiration, that they receive all of these things which can allow them to, in essence, take them, uh, take them uh, above the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of them even make this claim. They don't have, they, they use ayat. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And ya'budu Allah hatta ta'tiyukum yaqeen. Or kama qala subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that, And worship your Lord until yaqeen comes to you, until certainty comes to you. The mufassireen, ahl sunnah, they say, Yaqeen means death. So that means you worship Allah according to the Book of Allah, according to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until you die. According to that minaj, Kitab wa Sunnah. The only of Shaitan, they say, until Yaqeen comes to you, the certainty, this certainty is something that comes in your heart and then you no longer have to pray. And then you're no longer restricted, uh, you know, with boundaries of of halal and haram. You can enjoy wine and, and women and you know have ten women with you and just enjoy. 
Because you've reached yaqeen. You've reached certainty. And don't think I'm just making this up. SubhanAllah, look at, if you look at and have had any contact with some of the extreme Sufis, even in the West or wherever they may be, and you see the most strangest things. The strangest things. I've had some of those guys tell me the most strangest things. When I was a new Muslim, I, I encountered some living in Berkeley, California. And this was the first, the only time I met Hamza Yusuf. And I was a new Muslim and he had just come back from some country. And some of his, some of the guys that are his, his sheikhs or his, uh, uh, they teach for him in his institute. I remember one, he used to be a street vendor. And then he went to Syria and got turned down onto this uh, Aqidah of Batal. And now he's a big teacher and a big sheikh. The point is, Ahabatifillah, is be the only Rahman. They don't, they can't go beyond who is more pious than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is more who is a better example of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anam ajma'een. And that is who the awliya rahman are. Shaykh Salim bin Fuzayn, he says, How lai humu awliya Allah? Jama'u bain al-iman wa bain al-taqwa wa bain al-ilm al-nafiya wa amal al-salih. How lai humu awliya Allah? Laysa al-awliya man kharaja ala shari Allah wa ghi Sheikh Salim bin Fazan, he said, those are the, the friends of Allah or the supporters of Allah. They combine Iman, real Iman, as we talked about, and Taqwa and God fearfulness. The Taqwa, Ahabatullah, is adhering to the commandments of Allah and avoiding his prohibitions. And then he said, and between beneficial knowledge and righteous deeds. Those are the awliya rahman. Those ones who gain beneficial Islamic knowledge and they practice it. And he said, those are not the awliya of Allah, those who lead the sharia of Allah and change his religion and call to the worship of graves and uh, all the other shirkiyat practices that they, those domes and so forth. Those are the awliya of the shaitan. And they are not the awliya or the awliya are also not the sahir, the, the, the witches and the uh, those other people who practice all of these um, witchcraft and fortune telling and all of these people, these people are not the awliya rahman and we have to know that, it's so easy for us to say that but when you think about it, in our societies and in the world these practices are so prominent if you go back, if you go in the west people pay money to fortune tellers to go read a crystal ball they pay, and tarot cards and all of these other Ouija boards and all kind of other things and the Wiccans and all kind of pagan deans and things that people put their faith in them. They put their faith in hor horoscopes and stuff like that. So these practices are so easy and Muslims think they're so innocent that they don't know and they involve in them. They just think, you know, yeah, I pray five times a day and I do this. I just want to see, I'm just curious what the fortune teller says. But they don't realize the hukum that this is kufr and going to them is kufr. And they don't realize that participating in this sihr, that this is kufr, this, this, this wicked shirkiyat, wallahu musta'an. So those are some of the important aspects of knowing who the awliya of Allah are and the awliya of the shayateen. Sheikh Zaid, rahmatullahi mentioned, he said, yes, Allah the blessed and exalted is distinguished between the awliya of Rahman and the awliya of shaitan. And if the awliya of shaitan try to resemble the awliya of Rahman, then the proofs, actions, statements, deeds, and beliefs are the issues that distinguish between the two factions. Very important. The reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So it's going back to look at how they practice, how they understand Islam. What are they doing? What are they calling to? Is it from the Book of Allah? Is it from the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is it according to the Madhab of the Salaf, those people who came before them? So it's imperative that we are able to distinguish between the Awliya of Allah 
and the Olea, uh, Olea of the ship on. Then the Sheikh begins to mention some of the sifat of the Olea, the attributes of the Olea of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Sheikh mentions that the attributes of the Olea of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's by saying, as for the Olea of Rahman, then at the outset of their actions is the correctness of belief. That is because they direct their actions to Allah alone, to the exclusion of all else, and they are sincere to Him. They carry out the Sharia duties and the acts of worship in the legislated manner from purification, prayer, charity, fasting, hajj, and iman in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the last day, and that the qadr, the good and the evil of it is from Allah the Exalted. They achieve ihsan, beneficence, in whatever is between them and their creator and their originator, and whatever is between them and the creation in their various levels. In general, they are those who recite the book of their Lord. They take an abundant allotment from the sunnah of their Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they understand that with a good understanding and they follow that up with action. They do not confine that to themselves, but they convey whatever they have learnt to the Ummah because the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets and the conveyors of their da'wah, and they traverse their minhaj. And whosoever is excluded from them, even if he attempts to resemble them, then resemblance without following their traditions does not amount to their attributes. And what are those except mere claims from one who claims that he is a scholar? Or that he is a wali, a close friend of Allah, the mighty and majestic. This claim is not accepted, except after the establishment of the Sharia legislated proof for the correctness of the claims to the wilaya, the close friendship of Allah, the blessed and exalted. And real proof is in holding on to the book and the sunnah upon the correct manner in its entirety and in detail. Whosoever abandons holding on to the book and the sunnah, even though he claims to be a wali of Allah, then he is a liar concerning that. And it is used, and it used to be said in ancient times, if he claims do not have proofs for them, then their people are merely claimants. And listen to the noble ayat with which Allah addressed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as they contain the scales with which one will know the awliya of Rahman. From the awliya of shaitan. Allah the exalted said, Say, if you truly love Allah, then follow me. Allah will then love you and forgive you of your sins. The scholars of tafsir have stated, People claim love for Allah, and they say, We are awliya and the beloved of Allah. So Allah has tested them with this ayah. Say, O Muhammad, to those who claim to love, claim love for their Lord, if you love Allah in truth, then follow me. That is because they claim that they loved Allah but they did not follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and whatever he came with. So Allah tested them with that. So whoever followed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the outset in the correctness of belief, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called to for a long period of his life, rather he singled out calling for a period of 13 years in Mecca for teaching the people the meaning of la ilaha illallah continuously. This was be before the revelation of the obligatory duties the acts of worship and the explanation of the halal and the haram. And that is for no other reason except the importance of Tawheed, along with following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So here the Shaykh is clarifying that the Uliya Rahman, the Uliya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that they call the Tawheed. That they call that, that because that is the primary call. That's the purpose of our creation. I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and to worship Allah alone and avoid or be away from a ta'ud. Those things worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Letting us know that the primary, person, per, uh, primary purpose and what unites the awliya rahman and what unites the people of Tawheed, what unites even the prophets, alayhim afdhu salatu wa salam, was the call to Tawheed. It's the call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And, and ifradullah bi ibadah, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with your ibadah. And that distinguishes 
the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the friends of the shaitan. Because you'll see the friends, the awliya, uh, the awliya uh, uh, rahman that they're, all their worship is going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no uh, deception. There's no confusion. You're not wondering, well, he's supplicating. Is that uh, permissible to supplicate through so-and-so th to the grave, uh, to offer this to the grave, you know, so that the grave can carry your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There's no confusion there. It's a direct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of us can have. A dua huwa ibadah, kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Supplication is ibadah, it is worship. So letting us know that the only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they worship Allah alone. All their acts of worship go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't go through an intermediary. We don't pray to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't pray to the malaika. Alayhim salatu salam. We don't pray to any of the prophets. Alayhim afdal salatu salam. We don't pray to our dead. We don't pray to our grandfathers. We don't pray to our saints. We don't pray to the righteous. We don't pray to the trees. We don't pray to the dogs, the elephants, or the cows. So that distinguishes the only Allah from Oliya Shaitan. Then the Sheikh said, this was before the revelation of the obligatory duties. I, he said, and the establishment of that is a distinguishing sign for the love of Allah and a distinguishing sign that the follower is a wali from amongst the oli of Allah. If he dies upon this action, then we hope well for him and we hope for mercy upon him. This is the distinguishing sign of goodness and a good end. This is as long as a person dies upon following the Prophet wasallam and whatever he came with from the book and the sunnah. Uh, a very important point that Sheikh Salim bin Fozan men, uh, mentions here about the characteristics of the uh, Oliya, he mentions that they are not that they are not the ones who uh, that are always openly distinguishable meaning that they don't do their actions to be seen of people but yet you will see that they illustrate signs of loving the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by following his Sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those are the characteristics of the Oli of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Uh, Ibn al-Qayyim says in this regard, لَيْسَ لِأَوْلِيَا اللَّهِ عَلَامَةٌ يَتَمَيَّزُونَ بِهَا بَلْ يُقُونُونَ كَسَائِرَ النَّاسِ مَا يُعْفُونَ وَرَسُولُ صلى الله عليه وسلم Then he brings a hadith of the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم And then he says, هَذِهِ صِفَاتِ أَوْلِيَا اللَّهِ أَنَّهُمْ لَا يُذْهَرُونَ أَنفُسِهِمْ بَلْ يَحْرَسُونَ عَلَى إِخْتِفَاءِ so Ibn al-Qayyum mentions that the it's not from the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there isn't any necessarily openly distinguished signs. Although of course you see that they're trying to practice the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But he's saying, he said that they will be, you know, amongst the regular people. They will be uh, like the rest of the people. And they, they won't necessarily be known. And Fozan, he comments that this is because they strive to hide their good deeds and uh, exercise ikhlas lillah, you know, that sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they're not boastful that they are the only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're the, the, the most adherent to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or this and that, but rather they strive their utmost and they try to be sincere in their worship so as not to have any shirk or anything come into uh, belittling and destroying their acts of worship. Then the Shaykh he mentions about the ayat that we mentioned, say if you truly love Allah then follow me, Allah will then love you and forgive you your sins. He says, so this ayat tests everyone who claims that he loves Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, they are tested with it. 
So when he recognizes that obedience to Allah is in obedience, is in obeying his commands and avoiding his prohibitions, and when he recognizes that obedience to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is likewise in his commands and prohibitions, then he is a wali from amongst the awliya of Allah. And then he claims, and then his claims to loving Allah and loving his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be considered pure and truthful. It's by mutabah, following. So if he alleges these claims, but in the deeds of his life, in practical application, he does not obey the command of Allah, nor does he avoid his prohibitions, nor does he declare the halal to be lawful and the haram to be unlawful, and he does not follow his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then his claims are false. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَمِنَ النَّارِ وَمِنْ عُقُوبَةَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ This is because the crucial factor is the action and not merely the claims as he is, as has proceeded recently. So it's very important to make tatbiq, to practice the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to avoid those prohibitions of Allah and avoid deviation and avoid those things uh, which divert one from the path of, uh, of the awliya, of those people. And the awliya are who? Are those who follow the Book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be from the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah forgive us of our many, many sins and our acts of hypocrisy. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.